for the where are we? The Board of Assessors meeting of February 20th. It is 4.01 p.m. And there is no one else here other than <coughs> us, so I'm assuming we do not have any public comment. We do have some minutes that I believe are always going to or has passed, passed out, so if we can take a moment, peruse them, and I'll entertain a motion to approve after that. not be making that motion since he was not at the last meeting, so it would have to be the John Lewis Board. Oh, you will? Okay. Sure. All right. Do we have a second? I will second. Do we have any discussion? I don't hear anything, so I'll call a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I all, abstain. All opposed? One abstention? Motion carries. We could get some, some initials on. Well, initially, so we can keep Lil happy. That. Okay, the next agenda item is to sign some resident statutory exemption and division reports. Okay, I um, won't uh, mention names here uh, in the uh, interest of uh, confidence, uh, but uh, we do have several uh, exemptions. Uh, these are just the annual applications. This is a veteran's exemption. It's not working around this way, has it? So and uh, just a reminder, we have uh, until March 30th to uh, accept any elderly or veterans exemptions. Okay. So for the audience out there, if there's anyone believing that they might qualify, we'd love to hear from you before March 30th. Uh, stop by the office and pick up an application and talk to uh, our uh, colleague Linda Pendergrace. How do you pronounce her name? Pendergrass. I think I'm right. Do you? Yeah. I think, oh. Pendergrass. <laughs> That's how it's spelled. Anyway. I thought it was Pendergass. So. There's an R in there, I do know that. Right, well, that's my point, is I'm silent R. Even less likely. Well. She's on vacation correctly. this week, so we can't ask her, but put that on the agenda for next time. We want Clarification to sure clarifying how to pronounce her last name. Okay. Uh, <coughs> okay, so the agenda items are going to be monthly reports for motor vehicle and real, uh, real estate, which I have actually already signed them. I was in the office the other day. So, well, John is finishing signing off those reports. Um, how about an update on the status of our delinquents, delinquent tax accounts? Um, as you may or may not recall, we had uh, about 108 delinquent tax accounts long-standing delinquencies that uh, we needed to research to ascertain whether, in fact, these parcels actually exist, uh, whether 
there was some, uh, even some basis for moving forward with the tax title uh, foreclosure process. And so that re research is done. Um, and uh, Matt Larson from our staff uh, came down to, uh, along with me to do a lot of that research. And uh, so I, I didn't bring the report with me, uh, but uh, we're going to be uh, clicking through that report uh, over the coming months um, and uh, taking each property to the next step. Uh, in some cases, we're going to actually recommend that uh, the uh, tax foreclosure process uh, proceed. In other cases, we determine the parcel really doesn't exist. Uh, might have been, uh, well, a, a number of parcels have actually been combined with other tax parcels that we are receiving tax payments on, um, cleaning up essentially the, uh, uh, the, uh, the camera records to um, get those off the books and then we'll be bringing to the board probably in batches uh, abatements intended to, to clear those uh, those records. Uh, in other cases uh, we're dealing with properties of questionable or low value um, and um, but under private ownership uh, the property owners have likely abandoned paying taxes because the land is of marginal value and yep. and so uh, in those cases again I think uh, we'll have to make a decision about whether to uh, put these properties in a, a land of low value uh, tax taking process to expedite uh, uh, the, the town's taking. Um, there are some examples of properties that are actually road rights of way uh, that will just clear the books. But can we clear the books? I mean, because I think the issue is going to be we can clean up some of the ones that you talked about that have been combined with other parcels and the system is not updated. But if we have these private roads that are in some entity or an individual who have abandoned them, um, as much as we may say, fine, we're going to put that in the, the, the queue to go to tax title, the town's never going to take that because the town just yeah. doesn't want to own. So private those are road, the private road, the liability, and, and everything that goes so along. So those with. are some of the decisions that might have to be kicked up to uh, the selectmen or another board um, with maybe a board. Because we, board. because there is no tool for us to say we're going to value it at zero. The the main thing we want to do, uh, if if these, if we do continue to issue bills on these accounts, is to make sure that the value is realistic and as low as we can justify so that we're not losing that tax revenue. Right. Right. Because that way it will spread it out over the actual taxpayers. <coughs> the town will be able to realize the true amount of the levy versus this mm -hmm. these smaller pieces being inflated and, it, and not being collected. It, it gives the impression Mm -hmm. There's yeah, there's $500,000 out there that we're going to collect, and at the end of the day, exist. we're never going to collect that 500. So if we can minimize it to right. 10,000, which may be the lowest we can go, at least, you know, we know it's more up realistic. Front, it's realistic. 10,000 on a multi-million dollar budget isn't going to impact you as much, mm -hmm. but because they're really, and again, there is no way to completely, without taking it from tax title, wipe it off to zero, mm -hmm. correct? Or is there a way to value something at zero? I mean, that would be the... Uh, best solution. Will the DOR let us? Theoretically, all property has value, even if it's $100. Um, we're, we're compelled to, to put some positive value on every land parcel. Do we know what the lowest value we can put on something is? Is there, is there a floor that the DOR says, listen, you can't value anything at less than $100? Because at the end of the day, if we take all these properties and value them at 100 because they're Never gonna. Yeah. So they're, I'd they're rather do that. The drainage yeah. easement locks exactly. on <laughs> subdivisions. There are private roads. There's stuff that nobody wants to own. Right. So it comes. It com really comes down to uh, Department of Revenue uh, uh, certification uh, standards. Uh, they. They. We could, for example, make a claim that some properties have negative value. If there's an environmental right. uh, cleanup issue. Mm -hmm. The property's worth maybe $1,000, but you've got $10,000 worth of cleanup. Uh, we would not be allowed um, to
to, to carry a minus value on the property. Um, if we asked the DOR, could we get an answer and say, listen, here's the situation. We have these properties. What is the lowest you'll in the allow us to value it? In at? the past, they, uh, th what they've told me is it's got to be positive, non-zero value. The board may set a minimum valuation. It could be $100. Could be a dollar. Well, I mean, because we want, we, in all reality, we can make a legitimate argument that, listen, these you know, easements <coughs> to, to drainage, they, they, I mean, they are a liability. I mean, I think if, if you went to talk to anybody, if they wanted this value maybe to the, to the people in that, that particular area who live there, they need the drainage, but so, no one's going to pay for it. So our there. system will round to the nearest yeah. hundred. Okay, so if the system rounds to the nearest hundred, then the hundred right. may be what it is. So yeah. maybe at the end of the day, that's what we need to do. Right. We need to bring these all down to hundred. Right. Yeah, yeah, so if you have how many... Did you say there was 107? 108 uh, problem properties. But they're not all of this type. No. So out of that, there may be, say, half or, or like that? No, Probably even less. Less, less than that. So if there's a 50 third. of them that are like that, 50 times 100, that's... Well, that's my point. Yeah. You're, you're cleaning up a considerable amount of that, quote, unquote, uh, uncollected tax revenue that's right. really phantom. And revenue. what you may need to do is put a procedure in place that every year, we, we earmark these properties or any new ones that come online and we you know, we need to clean it up because the other thing is even though it may be a small amount at $100 for 50 <coughs> properties, if you don't do anything, they just carry forward and carry forward. You've you got to clean right. it up as you go along. So maybe that's ultimately what happens. We, we look at these properties, we value them at the minimal <coughs> amount we are allowed to, and then we have a procedure that says, that, you know, and at some given point during the year, we go in and clean the system up so it just doesn't keep carrying forward because you know even if it's ten dollars in tax revenue every year that doesn't get paid that 10 gets carried over the interest mm -hmm. gets carried and if we don't clean it up on our end the tax the, the this tax office is going to keep sending out the bill yeah and it's a it's a huge administrative not huge but it's an additional administrative burden on them to have to deal with that when there's never going to be any intention for those taxes to be paid right is there, no, it probably isn't. I mean, we, we, we've had opportunities to, to, like with personal property taxes and certain other things where we've said, we've, we've, we set a threshold where we don't tax them. Yeah. You can't uh, do that on real property. Well, the authorization uh, to do that on personal property is in statute and local. Uh, okay. Adopted by local acceptance. All right. So anyway, that's the update. Uh, honestly, my efforts right now are to get us through the abatement process, and then I'll be picking that up. Uh, Agreed. Uh, on on that front, um, I'm uh, plowing through, uh, really taking a kind of a fresh approach to uh, the abatement process, uh, building out uh, several reports for for each property that uh, uh, that will shed light to the board about. Um, First, market support for the, for our evaluation, and then second, answering the equity issue, uh, and and so uh, I'm about three fourths of the way through uh, building individual reports for each of the 40 uh, folks that have uh, applied for abatements. Okay. Um, roughly a third of the abatements are on waterfront properties, uh, so not surprised by that because the market for like front properties is so, has been and continues to be strong, we've had to ratchet up those values a bit more than so. So just from a timing standpoint, uh, and I, I, I would personally, I, I'm assuming maybe the, the board would agree that I would like to get this cleaned up before Mr. Burke's term runs out only because I think that's a little <coughs> easier for us to have these conversations <coughs> over how many meetings we need to before we have a new board member um, who's going to be coming in at the tail end. And I know sometimes this stuff can spill can spill over. Um, but is it your um, expectation um, um, that this stuff can be done before the end of March? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, hopefully well before. Um, the um, For Aaron's benefit, what we've done in the past is uh, I, I package all of the abatement applications. There's a cover sheet with each property. My recommendation, you can read through. Yep. 
the basis of the appeal. Uh, I remember the, some of them from the last. But that was my point. You called me. It was the tail end yeah. last year, though. It was I after the election. It kind of spilled into, and it's always a little awkward at that point for that person because they didn't have the benefit of, you know, conversations and meetings that had happened ahead of time. So that would be, I think, our goal should be to get this cleaned up. Right. So. And it gives you an opportunity at your your leisure, at your office or home, to be able to go through and and uh, do the homework, so to speak, uh, raise any questions you have, and then... Yes, much yeah. better than the first couple of years when I remember sitting in, not this conference room, but another conference room, and hours prior on. board member who kind of took the reins on that, we would just sit there and for hours and go through yeah. information. It was um, not very... I, you're efficient. saying that we're not thorough enough? We're thorough enough, but we can do it at our own time. I'm joking. Um, with that said, if you want to meet more often, if you feel it's more necessary to meet in the interim, I'm happy to do that too. I mean, not that I. Yeah, I'm not thinking. It, it's a <coughs> usually, yeah, meetings, we usually I, do end up having an extra yeah. meeting during abatement season just because of that. So I think we're going to get through 95% of them in one session. Yeah. But yeah. That's usually why we have that extra meeting because we may have a couple. That we extra, that extra yeah. you know, someone's going to want to come in and leave their case or whatever the case may be. So, but yes, I, if we, if we need to, we will have an extra meeting and get it squared up in March. So, so that's right. uh, that's the report on that front. Um, vision appraisal. Um, as I, uh, I think I mentioned this at the, the last meeting. I know you'd mentioned it to me when we we'd been talking, and I forget if it did come up at the last meeting or not. But for, in case it didn't, for the other board members' benefit and for public's benefit, you may as well. Yeah. It's gonna come up. It's going to come up in budget discussions anyway. So. So the Vision Cama system, Cama, meaning computer assisted mass appraisal. Um, the the Vision Cama system is. Um, Ver, uh, that we're on is version 6.5. Uh, it's been the version we've been operating on for probably close to uh, 10 years. Um, Vision uh, will soon, probably within the coming year, no longer support that and are requiring us to, um, to uh, upgrade to their uh, version 8. Um, and uh, how software companies do that. How can we get more revenue out of our client base? We'll just stop supporting this one. We'll make a few tweaks and changes, and then we'll tell them they all got to upgrade. And so in this case, there are substantial uh, improvements. Um, I'm sure there are. Um, but there is a price it's, tag. Yeah, it, it's in every industry. So, so uh, in our budget, uh, we've requested uh, $30,000 to pay for that upgrade. Um, and. Uh, We'll see what the budget makers do with that. But um, just to let you know that uh, the request has been made, um, we do not, uh, in my estimate, want to be caught with our trousers down uh, and uh, with, with a camera system that's not being supported. Uh, interestingly, um, cost to convert to another system. <laughs> yeah, we had this conversation. Yes, it's going to be roughly the same uh, if we went to. Uh, well, frankly, there aren't many alternatives, uh, practical alternatives. This is like Patriot Pro is one. SS Pro, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's only a handful. Yeah. But those are the only two I could think of, actually. There's, there's a, a new product that uh, uh, Tyler Technologies, uh, Tyler brings us Munis, our accounting package. Sure. They also yep. have their own camera system. Um, that would also be a comparable $30,000 bill. Not even taking into consideration. The pain of a conversion is actually it. much worse than yeah. the expense. Well, yeah, we saw that train wreck with the, with the tax office when they went from whatever they were using. They were using Munis, right? They were using Munis, yeah. They went to Soft Right. And then they soft needed to have Soft Right, and then that was a train wreck, and they yes. went back to Munis. And guess where we are now? Cost oh, with Munis. Yes, <laughs> right. To the cost of what? Two hundred oh, grand, a lot of money. Yeah, I can yeah. remember that. Actually, we were involved in those conversations money. with yeah. Uh, yeah. The, that little financial team we had for a while. So, yeah, um, that did not play out well. Yeah, it's it's our it's the most practical option, and um, 
I'll, I'll mention at this point, too, um, we are slated, um, I was going to bring it up under the business, the selectmen are having their departmental budget meetings, um, not next week, but the following week, and the assessors are on the um, agenda for 7-15 on Monday, March 2nd. So I, I have it on my calendar, and I plan on attending if anyone else has nothing to do or has a planned appointment to have a tooth pulled or a root canal and you're looking for an excuse to do something else you can't just be can join that us you, that we have faith in you as the chair to to explain the needs of the department oh, you could say that too i'll take the compliment i think it has to be more painful in a meeting with a selectman yeah <laughs> i'm thinking anything that's more uh, joyful then a meeting with a selectman would, would trump that, and you, that that could be the excuse. I, had, I think I had the same shtick in the same line when you were selected. So. I, and I it, notoriously, like I, when I was on a school committee, I would badmouth a selectman. Now that I'm not a selectman, you, you're not wearing that hat, you're not playing that role, they're fair game. So. Hire the office, the bigger the target. Yeah. Where, like, I don't board of assess. It doesn't even matter. But all so, right. I guess my point is, is that I, I think you can. Yeah, ours is pretty. Yeah. This vision is the only. That's the big ticket. Probably item. real conversation we need to have. Um, our Harald is one through the budget, and we've discussed it, and we're, you know, we're 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 not asking for anything other than actually pay, on, pay our employees and. Keep our, actually, aside from the special request, our regular budget is actually coming kind of in drop less. Down, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, by I think six seven thousand dollars, so right. that should make some folks happy. Uh, wanted to also uh, let you know I uh, projected uh, our fiscal year twenty twenty one new growth at uh, two hundred and seventy five thousand. Uh, uh, Sent up some documentation to Todd and um, and uh, folks uh, on on that figure. Uh, we've also had discussions about um, new growth um, and the overlay account. I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, not new growth, but the, the um, overlay account. And uh, um, actually had a, a discussion with John uh, on the topic when it came up and uh, uh, really like your approach. I've, I've rolled it out uh, across all my communities that we basically um, look to maintain uh, come into the fiscal year maintaining uh, a certain uh, bank account or, 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 or account level, if you will, uh, and then a request at budget time is whatever it takes to get us back up to that right. that, that figure. What do we suggest? Was it 400? I, I believe you in talking with Todd that you I think the, top, the, the number was 400,000. 400,000. We were looking at as the base amount. As the maintaining. Yeah. So if you turn around and, you know, we do 100,000 in abatements, then next budget cycle, it's all right, we need 100,000 to get it back up to where it was. If, if you have a year where it's 200,000, then go back up to 200,000. So, yeah. um, um, yeah, as opposed our, to stockpiling money in it. Exactly. Help anybody. Our, um, overlay outlay uh, for exemptions and uh, overvaluation abatements runs around 150000 a year. Mm -hmm. So on average, that's mm -hmm. about what we'll be asking uh, for to replenish the uh, overlay account. Yep. Uh, I do have uh, one other matter. Uh, have you all had a chance to work with the new GIS system? Um, Not to the degree you have. It's fantastic. Uh, I can tell you this, I've heard from a lot of people that it's been a lot more in it than it had in the past, so. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I think Norman uh, pounded out three butters lists for your company uh, this morning. Um, an exercise that would have taken hours now, just minutes, it's really, really nice. Uh, we have uh, an issue in, in with our GIS and getting everything cleaned up. We discovered 
that uh, there were actually uh, a number of years of map changes that uh, were not reflected in the in the digital media that was um, given over to cartographic associates by our prior uh, map vendor. Uh, and uh, they're now having to go back uh, and um, I think it's three or four years worth of map changes that uh, cartographic associates is going to have to um, uh, process uh, to, to get our maps fully up to date. Uh, there is a contract here to make that happen. Uh, it is uh, basically a $3,200 charge for doing the three years worth of map maintenance. Uh, and I'd like if you were willing to... I know you mentioned this to me, and if you can refresh my memory, um, I believe we're going to have enough room in the budget to yes. make that work. So to summarize it in line, in, in simplest terms possible, prior vendors, going back a number of years, were not updating the maps to the degree they should have been, or or if they were, what they passed along to uh, the cartographic associates was an outdated uh, parcel layer. So this is to clean up errors in the past. Uh, Got nothing to do with our company. Uh, the prior vendor uh, is out of business, uh, so there's right. little opportunity to hold them to. And unless we do this, we're not going to have a accurate yes system. We want we want our maps to to uh, sync up mm -hmm. with our assessment record, so there's a one to one correspondence, yep. and uh, we're not quite there yet but this will help us. What do you think, Aaron? I'm going to defer to the attorney to look at the... Well, it seems to have all the necessary elements of a contract. Is it okay for us to sign? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's I guess if we agree that this is uh, what we want to do... I'm going to agree I, that I we need to spend the money. And I think it's it. reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. I think we want to have this thing be <clears> is. is error-free and usable and robust as possible, and I don't think that this is an unreasonable amount of uh, money to... Uh, and it's a one-time... scope of work that they're doing. Yeah. It's one time to get us fully caught up. Yep. And interestingly, the $3,000 figure is what our prior vendor would charge us for a single year. Uh, so in migrating over to Cartographics, uh, our annual map maintenance will be potentially much less than... Okay. What it used to be. Well, since it's a contract, I think there's a couple of things. One, I'm pretty sure that um, we're not authorized to sign contracts, are we? I think we can take a vote. I would think that that wouldn't be something we would sign. Right. The yeah. German yeah. aspects that have to be followed. So that. let's do this. I would make a motion to take Harald's recommendation to contract with um, Cardiograph Associates to update the map system and um, as was described um, and recommend that the Board of Selectmen or the Procurement Officer enter into a contract to get that done. That's my motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. So, Harold, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this okay. contract. This is Maureen, tell her what we voted on and tell her to hopefully see who can sign it and advise her that uh, we have room in our budget this year. Let's take care of that, so we don't need to go looking elsewhere for it. Any other um, old business? Uh, there is none. Any new business? No new business. No else any new business. All right. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.
Meetings ended at 4.30.